Hello, today I'm going to talk about my At Games Legends Gamer Pro arcade system. Now I bought this about a year ago and I did do an unboxing video then and gave a overview of the Coin Ops X system. And over the year I've played it every few weeks and it was probably about a month ago that I got an itch to play an arcade game and I plugged this in again and it prompted me for a firmware update. Now before I did the firmware update I decided that I was going to go ahead and do some research and see if the new firmware update was compatible with the add-ons that I was using. And after doing some research, it looked like that it was compatible. So I went ahead and moved forward with the update and everything seems to be working. But in addition to doing that research, I noticed that there were a few more options for different add-ons. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. I currently have CoinOps X running on here, but I'm gonna go ahead and move to Awesome Sauce 1 add-on. Now this does involve going to the internet and downloading a ROM pack, which comes off of archive.org. And archive.org is a public library system in the United States, which allows you to borrow different digital media. The library system has been around in the U.S. for quite a, quite a long time. I think Benjamin Franklin was the original uh, person who set that up in the United States. And it has had legal challenges throughout the decades, uh, even for physical media. And as we move into the digital media and digital century that we're in, things do get challenged on this. But as of right now, you can download them, which is where I'm going to go ahead and source these from. So let's go ahead and get started. I will pin a comment with the link to the Internet Archive here, and while you can download any of these ROM sets, I really only want to download the Arcade ROM set. There are other console ROM sets you can download, but find the OneSauce main file, update May 2022, and download. I'm going to download using a torrent file because it's faster for me. However, if you do this, I highly suggest you use a VPN service. I am not sponsored in any way and have used a few different VPNs over the years. Right now I am using Surfshark, mostly because it was recommended by a few other YouTubers I follow, including Modern Vintage Gamer. I will provide an affiliate download link if you want to try it. In addition, download the OneSauce current firmware conversion files. This contains the files needed based on the device and firmware you are using, including the Core Puck, Core Max, and ALUs. I am using the Core Puck. Now I have loaded up all the downloads into my client. And while those are downloading, I'm going to prepare my USB drive. I will reuse the same drive from my previous CoinOpsX video, which is this SanDisk 128 gig drive. And I have never had any issues with it. Since I already had CoinOpsX build on this drive, I will need to delete all of those files. But if you are setting up a new drive, all you need to do is format the drive with FAT32. I think XFAT will also work with most of the recent firmwares. I finished downloading the OneSauce base files, so I'll unzip them directly to my USB drive. Since I'm using an Arcade Legends Pro, I'll unzip the OneSauce conversion 2022-05-25 puck file to the same folder. Select yes to overwrite any files. After unzipping all the files, go ahead and go to the USB drive and delete the sauce folder. And that's it. The drive is ready, so I'm going to eject the disk and plug it into my core puck. Now I have plugged in the USB drive, powered up my core puck, and have connected the Arcade Legends Gamer control pad here. And so I'm going to go ahead and move over to BYOG or bring your own games. And in the previous setup, you would go to add on X, but for this one, you'll want to go to just add on. If you click on that, you should see two options here and you know you've done everything correctly. And so go to gamer performance, which is what I like to use. There is a no boost. I believe the gamer performance overclocks the CPU a little bit and then the no boost just runs at a normal speed. I like to use the gamer performance and then choose scripter. Give that just a minute or so, it'll boot up probably not even that much time. And it's loaded. So first thing I'm gonna do actually is switch over to Arcade and just click the A button here. And it's going to load this and click all games. And this will be all of the games that are loaded here. So there are 1,770 games loaded that I can play. That's a lot of games. And you'll notice as I scroll through here, I actually scrolls through really, really fast. I can also hit this uh, R, B, R, one button to jump to the different letters and choose a game. So let's just start with A here. 
and look at some of the different games and get one game started here. So we do have Afterburner. So I'm gonna go ahead and load up Afterburner by just pressing A. And now that has loaded up. Now I can simply just put, uh, I don't know if it's, it says insert coin there. So to insert a coin, you press the rewind button. And then to start the game, you press the P1. And that loads up. It looks like there's an overlay that's a little messed up on this one. I may actually, if I hold this down, I can go into a menu system and I can change some of those options. This is just running RetroArch. So by holding the P1 down, you go into the RetroArch menu. Sometimes what I've seen is the on-screen overlays don't load properly the first time. So I'll just click A to go into there. Display overlay is on, that looks good. Um, so we could just go back to resume and see if it loads it, it does not fix it. So the other option then is to come down to shaders and you can change your shaders. I'll go through shaders a little bit more later in the video. For now, I'm just gonna apply no shader and see if that makes a difference. And that doesn't make a difference. So we may just need to apply a shader. And that's one thing about this uh, core pack that I've noticed that each game is gonna take a little bit of tweaking to get it working correctly. When you run on the CoinOpsX, somebody's already done all that work for you. And this one just takes a few minutes sometimes to figure out exactly which option is going to work best. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out here. Got a lot of different choices in games here. So let's load up Street Fighter Hyper Fighter. So to insert a coin, I just press the rewind button and then I press player one to start the game. And then I can pick my character. I'm just button mashing at this point. But what I do wanna show are a few of the different options. Now with the awesome sauce, you get a lot of options here. If I hold down the player one, that will pause the game and take me into a retro arch menu where I can go ahead and do different options. So let's go back to the yeah, quick menu, scroll down. I can apply shaders by clicking on here and then choose different shaders. Like I can do LCD or I can do a CRT. I can also do save states. So I could save a state and load a state just like you can with any RetroArch. And let's go ahead and resume and you'll see the shader is applied. So let's go ahead and exit out of this game. Okay, now that I'm back at the homepage here, let's go ahead and pick a game where I think shaders really do make a really big difference. So that would be Outrun. Oh, run there. Here's Outrun. We'll go ahead and get that one started. So on this one does look a little dark. I'm gonna go ahead and load the shaders. Sometimes it doesn't load the bezels the first time too. So I'm gonna go into the RetroArch menu here and go down to shaders. And if I just apply the default shader here, and then we will go back home, you'll see that this is loaded with no shaders, but the bezels are loaded. So if the bezels don't load and the picture doesn't look correctly, sometimes you can just apply a default shader and that will fix it. However, this game, I'm gonna go ahead and insert a coin here and play. Um, I think looks much better with a CRT shader and I'll show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and get started here. Okay, and we get started. And now this is without a shader, but I'm gonna go ahead and hold down the retro arch menu and 
I think the shader makes a big difference here. And you're free to try any of these shaders. I recommend just experimenting and find the shader you like best. What I found here works really well is either the CRT standard or the CRT curve. I'm just gonna apply the standard here for now. Hit B to go back to quick menu and resume. And for me, that looks a lot better. It just gives a little bit more of the appearance of speed with this shader running on my monitor. Now, if I want to actually go into the main, main menu, I can press this and change various dip switches. And so by doing that, I press here and then I use B to actually enter the menu and then A to change things. This actually becomes important in other games. I'm going to show you real quick actually what game that does become important in. Now, one of the things with Battletoads is to get the second player loaded, you have to use the main settings. And so do you go down to dip switches here, and this is important. So the first thing to do is turn three players off. By default, that is turned on. And then you also want to turn on the common coin mech. If you don't do the common coin mech, then since there is only one coin button here, um, you will not be able to put in that second or third coin. And if you do three players on, then each control determines which character you're playing in Battletoads. So by turning that off, and turning common coin on, this game becomes playable. So the first thing I'll do is go ahead and insert a coin. And it takes currently two coins to start. You can change that in the main settings on the dip switches. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and start. Now, because I turned three player off, I can choose the character that I wanna play with. So let's start with Zitz. Now, I think this game looks really good without turning on any shaders, so we'll go ahead and keep it that way. Again, it's really shaders are your preference, how you want to, uh, how you want the screen to look. This is also a great multiplayer. Now, if I want to play a different player or set the second one up, I just insert the coin and then hit player two. I've got two, two coins for the, the player two and then hit player two, and then I can choose who I want to be there and then now I have two players out. I should get my daughter to help me play this. You can, in addition, go back in here and choose save states. So I could save a state if I want to, and then reload that state at any point that I want by simply holding that back down and doing load state. And it goes back to the previous state. Uh, actually, it says this one does not support save states. Interesting. Okay, it looks like not every core supports save state. You're just going to have to experiment with that. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here and talk about one of my favorite games and the reason I actually bought this Legends Gamer. And that game is Golden Tee. Now, there's a caveat with Golden Tee. For Golden Tee, I cannot load it through the All Games menu. So I'm actually going to back out of this menu and by clicking this rewind button, it lets me back out of the menu. So from this arcade menu, I need to back out again one more time. And from here on the main one where you have themes, handhelds, consoles, computers, and then collections, you'll need to load. Yes, you'll want this specific menu and you'll need to load any of the trackball and any of the spinner games as well as light gun games from this menu. If you don't do that, the trackball will not work. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. There's light gun, spinner, and trackball. So I'll select, and twin stick. I'll select trackball, and then I will move my menu over to the G. And then load up Golden T 3D. By going through this menu specifically, the trackball will work. Now, a few things with this loading. Um, I like to come into the home settings here and uh, change my trackball to medium, my display mode to pixel perfect, and I turn off the scanline filter. If you don't do pixel perfect, you can do some other options here, but they start to squash the image and pixel perfect 
uh, is the way I like without squashing the image. But you'll notice by doing that, let's click home again, it does cut off the borders. I don't mind that. I'd rather have pixel perfect and not see the borders if I don't have to. So I insert some coins, got two coins, one coin in there, got my second coin. And let's get started. I'll do a one player game. And let's press start. Uh, let's do Oak Valley. And then we can get started here. Pretty good hit, 283, 84 yards, not bad. There's the flag. I'm going to go ahead and use my wedge, which is 80 yards. I need to go 78, so I'm just going to do it a little bit lighter. See if I can come before the pin or just after it. Not a bad hit there. Now I've got a 28 foot putt. Looks like it's pretty straight on. The wind is coming towards me. So let's just go back and then forward. And there it goes, now it's in. I hope you enjoyed this video setting up the one sauce ROM set on an Arcade Legends system. This will work on many different systems including the Legends Mini and the Legends Ultimate. If you did enjoy this, please don't forget to put a like on the video and subscribe to my channel. Bye for now.